Well, hey there, welcome back to another Eye Care for Your Brain with board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan. Today we're back with another bite sized brain health lecture, and this one is why your brain needs you to taper gabapentin. With my previous lecture on gabapentin, we recently hit 1 million views. This is officially a viral video, so we are very pleased with that. Thank you so much for listening. And I thought I would revise the topic because it has been so so popular. So today's focus is what does the scientific literature have to teach us about how to get off or taper gabapentin? Well, it turns out it's got some very specific advice, very specific things that I want you to hear about. So why would somebody want to get off of gabapentin? Well, for some, they accidentally missed a dose and they realize that they're actually having withdrawal symptoms and this makes them worry about dependency on the medication. For other people, their dose has been creeping up uh, milligram by milligram over time. They need more and more to get the same effect. And we call this tolerance, which is also a warning sign of addiction. About 40% of people who take gabapentin report using more than was originally prescribed over time. For others, maybe you have questioned the risk benefit ratio. Maybe after seeing my last video, how much is this really helping me versus maybe giving me any side effects that I maybe even haven't been aware of. Interestingly, gabapentin effectiveness rating is only between 15 and 20% in helping people with symptoms. As we have talked about, gabapentin is extensively prescribed off label. So this means people who have anywhere from seizures to insomnia to chronic pain to mental health issues, the list really, really goes on and on, are using this medication. And as we've talked about, it has a very strong inhibitory property. So what this means is it puts a lot of break on the brain. Now, sometimes when you put too much break on the brain for some people, you actually get issues with motivation and maybe depressed mood. So that might be another reason somebody might want to get off of it. Other people have noticed drug seeking behaviors in themselves that are maybe concerning. So maybe you spend more time thinking about your gabapentin than you think is normal. Maybe you have actually acted in ways that you're not proud of to get it and it really brings up this idea that you might be addicted. The FDA trusted source has also warned that people who have certain respiratory risk factors may have serious breathing problems if they use gabapentin. So these risk factors include being over the age of 65, also taking an opioid pain medication, also taking a benzodiazepine, so clonopin, Xanax, Valium, or antihistamines on a regular basis. They also worry if you have a chronic pulmonary condition like COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that these things combined with gabapentin can maybe give you some respiration issues. And finally, there are some people who want to get off of alcohol and opioids that are actually prescribed gabapentin. Then when it comes to getting off the gabapentin, there's actually not a lot of guidance about that. So as I've said before, gabapentin has risks that are underappreciated because it's really become appreciated as this, you know, cure all for so many different things. And the benefit is often touted that, well, it's not an opioid and it's not a narcotic, but that doesn't mean that it's risk free. The brain gets used to all medicines rather quickly. And in response, it reduces its own production of neurotransmitters in response. So when it doesn't get that hit in the form of that dose, we have a neurological response that we experience as withdrawal. So neurologically, a sudden change in the levels of our bioavailable chemicals, like things like serotonin and dopamine, these have a direct impact on mood, cognition, and the physical body. So withdrawal symptoms seem to vary quite a bit from person to person, and this is probably due to our history of addiction, our age, what else we're taking at the time of the withdrawal. Some people will experience severe side effects trying to get off of gabapentin, and other people seem to go off of it with relative dis little discomfort. But there are four factors that are reported in the literature that seem to increase your risk of having a difficult withdrawal from gabapentin, and those are how long you've taken it, how high your dose is, if you've ever had any what they call pre-morbid psychiatric issues like 
major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder that is more than mild, so in the moderate to severe range. And if you are of advanced age, which is over 65, and the advanced age part is mostly accounted for by kidney disease. So 30 to 40% of people in this age group will have some form of chronic kidney disease. Gabapentin is excreted by the kidneys, so that's where we get a little bit worried there. So in this video, what I'm gonna try to do is summarize for you what the literature tells us if you want to stop or significantly reduce your dose. There's no official guidelines that I could find that will guide the management of gabapentin withdrawal. You can develop a physical dependency on this medication after just three weeks of use. So think about how long you've used it. And what's very important is how high your dose has been. So doses range from 300 milligrams typically to about 1200 to 1800, although I have seen people way higher over that. So what would be ideal is if you have a trusted medical provider to partner with, and that would allow you to be under an expert's care while making these decisions and to get a personalized approach. So this means, again, someone looks at your unique health history, thinks about the constellation of all your medications before advising you on what the taper schedule should look like. If you are also also taking an opioid or a benzo, do not try to also get off of gabapentin at the same time. About 20% of people taking gabapentin are also taking those two other classes of medications. And for you, you might need a medically supervised detox. It's that significant. If you come off of two or three of those inhibitory properties at the same time, you are putting yourself at significant risk for horrible withdrawal symptoms that you don't want, including seizure. So in general, a slow, slow taper is what we recommend. It is less painful. It is uh, going to result in much less symptoms and keep you much more healthy. So the more suddenly you stop gabapentin, the worse your withdrawal symptoms are going to be. So dosing taper should be done with this medication, certainly over weeks, if not months. So I think that will come as a surprise to some of you. The best recommendations I could find were talking about decreasing by an average of 25% in your dose per day at a maximum. So this would be no more than 300 milligrams going down over the course of every four days. So that is slow, 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 slow. There's certainly no place for cold turkey and gabapentin. The American Addiction Center said that gabapentin is typically phased out over about a week, but that the exact schedule really depends on each person's particular situation. I did find numerous case studies. So this is where a team of doctors just write up a case history on one patient related to gabapentin withdrawal. So I wanted to just tell you a few of those because a really big meta-analysis has not been written yet. So one case study had a 32-year-old woman who needed to taper off gabapentin for 18 months, and she had been on 1,200 milligrams per day. So I think that is a lot longer than most of you assume. The medicine, gabapentin, has a half-life of about five to seven hours longer in people with the kidney disease of advanced age, and it usually takes about five half-lives for a drug to completely leave the body. For gabapentin, this means at about the 40-hour mark, so anywhere from two to three days, most people, if they cold turkey, which is not advised, will start to have significant withdrawal effects. And when this happens, typically people have anxiety, sweating, agitation, heart palpitations, cognitive issues, slowed processing, nausea, worsened pain, so whatever you took it for comes back, dizziness, light sensitivity, and like I said before, even seizures. So the withdrawal syndrome from gabapentin really looks like alcohol withdrawal, really looks like benzo withdrawal because of the same mechanism of inhibitory action. There was also a case study that detailed a 71-year-old man who wasn't taken off gabapentin completely, but he had been advised to go down dramatically in too short of a period. So his primary care doctor had him on 600 milligrams three times a day, so a total of 1,800, and he was advised to go down to 200 twice a day. So he went from 1,800 to 400, and at day five, he started to experience stroke 
like symptoms to the point where his daughter took him to the emergency room. So he had trouble speaking, he had blurry vision, he was confused, he had ringing in the ears, he had difficulty using his hands and poor balance. He was admitted under a stroke protocol. This looked like a stroke. And over a few days when they couldn't find anything on the MRI and he reported a worsening headache, uh, more difficulty with his vision, the inpatient team thought, well, we've tried everything else. Let's actually try to restart him on gabapentin. And after just two days of going back to 300 milligrams three times a day, so a total of 900, he had a complete resolution of his symptoms and a return to his usual baseline and he was discharged safely. So within one to two weeks, most people who are finally getting to the point where they can actually stop their gabapentin, so you've done the appropriate taper with the help of your doctor. After you stop, there's usually a one to two week period where people are kind of getting back to their baseline. But there are some people who will have lingering mood symptoms for weeks, if not months. So oftentimes this presents as depression. So think about your timeline, think about your symptoms. There are reports of magnesium supplements or food high in magnesium being able to help with the withdrawal symptoms of gabapentin. So we have some foods that are very high in magnesium pumpkin seeds, almonds, spinach, cashews, peanuts, black beans, edamame, dark chocolate, and peanut butter. Now, the thing about magnesium is you really can't take too much in food. The body is able to absorb that pretty good. We get into trouble though with too high of a dose of a magnesium supplement. So this very often results in GI symptoms. So a lot of nausea, cramping, diarrhea. You don't want that. So why is this an important point of advocacy? Why did I want to do this follow-up video? Well, first and foremost, it affects me and my patients because it causes unnecessary pain and suffering. Whereas if you just knew how to do it better, you might not have to suffer so much. The next one is we need to continue to encourage doctors to fully educate patients about the medications that they're taking, including any risks of withdrawing too rapidly. The other one is we have a healthcare system that is absolutely on the brink of bankruptcy and is driving up costs to a point where healthcare is becoming more and more expensive, more and more inaccessible to more and more people. So we need to put a stop to unnecessary workup. So think of our gentleman who was in the hospital for stroke. That inpatient hospitalization probably cost fifty to one hundred thousand dollars more than it needed to if he had just been educated that going down in the gabapentin dose was too much too soon. Furthermore, his primary care doctor should have also been educated towards that. So we're doing our part here, talking to the general public, and then you can also bring it back to your doctor and just let them know that gabapentin is not without its risks, and we don't want to try to get off of it too soon. So the bottom line is you have to taper gabapentin. That is something that you absolutely need to do to avoid unnecessary pain and suffering. I want you to ideally do this under a medical provider supervision who considers your whole person care, who thinks about your medical conditions, your age, the other meds you're on, your history of addiction, your history of withdrawal, your sensitivity to medications. The longer you've been on gabapentin, the higher dose that you've been on, the older you are, the more important it is to go slow. And please be extra cautious if you have ever had a seizure or seizure-like activity, as it is an anticonvulsant and can significantly reduce your seizure threshold. So please tell me and all of the other listeners about your experience in getting off gabapentin. How was it for you? What did you learn from it? What can you share with other people so their experience with it will not be more unpleasant than it needs to be? Thanks so much. Please subscribe to our channel, I Care For Your Brain, here at YouTube and on Facebook. Until I see you again, take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.